Hey everyone, it's Meredith from Bespoke ELA, and I'm just coming on with a quick tutorial about how to take a PDF worksheet and put it on Google Slides so that students can type on it. It's actually really simple to do this, so let me show you. Let me show you my screen. I have a lot of things open and a lot of things going on right now, as um, we all do. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to your Google Slides, and you're going to open up um, a new one, right? And the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we format our slide the same size as a piece of paper. Now we are teachers and we are very well aware that a piece of paper is eight and a half by 11 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these boxes that are on here because I won't actually need those. So to do this formatting on Google Slides, you simply go to File, you're going to go down to your page setup. You're going to select custom. And here you have your boxes to type in eight and a half by 11, and it should just by default be on inches. And you select, you select and click apply. And now I have a Google slide that is the same size as a piece of paper. All right, now let me go grab a PDF document. Here's one right here I have already open. No, that's something else. Let me grab a PDF file for us that we can use. Let's see. Um, let me grab, let me just grab this one real quick. This will work. Oh, I did have one open. Okay. Anyhow, so you open up your PDF file and I have one here on commentary versus plot summary. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to need a picture version of the worksheet that I want to put on Google Slides. I need it as a JPEG or a PNG file, but I need it as a picture. So if you open up your PDF document, at least on um, my Mac here, I can right click on the worksheet I want. I can select export as and then I can change it here where it says format. Let me retitle this. Let's see. Commentary worksheet one. Okay. Format. I'm going to click on that box and I'm going to select, I can select JPEG, I can select PNG, but I'm going to go ahead and just do it as a JPEG, best quality, and then I'll, I'll select save. So I need a picture version. If this doesn't work for you for some reason, again, I'm using a, a MacBook to do this, but if this doesn't work for you for some reason, then you can always take a screenshot of the worksheet. There are lots of different ways to take a screenshot, um, and I will leave that to you to Google that on how to do that because the way I do it on my MacBook is not going to be the same way you do it on your PC. Anyway, but you just need a photo version of the worksheet. So let me go back to my Google slide. And so what I want to do here, let me just make sure I title my presentation so that when my students, I share the link of this worksheet with my students so, that, you know, we all know what it's called and we can find it easily. So commentary worksheet number one. Okay. What I want to do is I don't want to just insert this as a picture because what will happen is it will be a movable image and it will be annoying to work with because it will move around. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. If I upload from my computer this picture, which I now have this JPEG of, okay. If I just insert as a photo, look, I can move it around. I don't want my students to be able to move the photo. So that option is not the best option. What you want to do is insert this worksheet as a background image. So to do that, go to background, and see where it says image, choose image. So you'll choose image. You'll upload the image from your computer that you have saved as a picture. Right there, done. Now, see how this worksheet is part of my background? And what's great is students cannot move this. They can't delete it on accident. They can't move it around. So that is fantastic. Now. Where I have all these lines for students to write, obviously I need them to be able to type on that. Right now they can't type there. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to insert a text box 
very simply by selecting this little T that's inside a box for text box. And I'm going to insert a text box over where I want them to type. So I can make it and drag it all the way down and make it as big as I need it to be. If you have a, a more involved worksheet, then you may need to insert multiple text boxes. I want to make sure you have plenty of room to type. Now, I do not expect students to be able to type on these lines. I don't foresee that happening. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to fill the background of my text box with a color. And I'm just going to color it white so I can cover up those lines as if they never existed on this worksheet. So I'm going to go to this little bucket with the drop. It says fill color. Click it, select it, and I'm going to select white. And you'll notice that my lines automatically disappear. They're gone. So now if I double click, I have this box that I can type in. There we go. And my students will actually be able to type directly their responses directly into this box onto this worksheet that I created, which is pretty cool. Now, if I click off that, do you notice how if I'm just looking at this worksheet, I can't see where to type. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and write on there, type on there, type here. So that when my students open this up, they're going to see, oh, this is where I start typing, right in there. And go ahead and set it on the font and the size of font that you want. So this is by default going to be on Arial 14. Let's say you want something else. Let's say you want Times New Roman, and of course you want 12 point font, you want MLA format, there you go. Make sure you set it on that font and that size because I guarantee whatever you have it set on is exactly what they're going to type it in. So don't have it on something fancy like Chelsea Market or Satisfy or whatever because that's what you're going to end up reading. If I want to put a line around this box, I just simply click the text box, I go up here where, to, to where there, these lines are, and they give me some options if I want a dashed line, if I want a border, you know, a solid line, and then the weight of the line. So let's just say I want a solid line, and it's going to by default put it on one pixel. Maybe I want two pixels, a little thicker line. So now I've created a box for students to type in, if you want that. I mean, it's entirely up to you what you want it to look like. But that is literally it. Now, when I'm ready, I can go to share and I can get a shareable link. Um, and here's the deal. This says anyone with the link can view this. And I don't want to give my students the, the power to edit this, but I do want my students to be able to use it. So what I need to do with this link is I actually need to change one word in it to make them force a copy of the link. Let me just get a document open here, show you what I mean. So when I go to give this link to my students, let's say I want to give it to them on Google Classroom, I need to change this last, this last part of the link right here from edit, where it says edit onwards. I need to erase that and replace it with the word copy. What's going to happen now is it's going to force my students to make a copy of this Google slide, of this document that we created. Okay? And so they'll get a, a, their own, very own copy of this document that they can type on. Okay? So don't give them the power to edit it because if they're, they're going, they go in to edit this, they're editing it for all of your students that open it. So you do not want them to be able to have that power. You just want them to be able to make a copy so they have their own personal copy. So what I would do is I would just take this link and just to show you how I would work this, um, I would go into my Google Classroom, which I have a million things open. Don't we all right now? Are we all so busy and crazy? Um, I would go into my Google Classroom. Hold on, I have a few Google Classrooms going. And I would just simply, let's say, okay, second period, sure. Um, I would just give them an assignment, create assignment. And in that assignment, I would tell them, you know, commentary worksheet number one, please complete this assignment by, and I would give them some kind of due date, and I would give them that link, okay? And then I would assign it. Um, and I can fill all this other information out as well. So that's it. So it'll force them to make a copy that they can type on and you should be good to go. So that is a quick tutorial on how to take any PDF worksheet that you may have and make it editable 
not editable, but make it so that students can type on it as a Google slide so that you can share it out and have them uh, work on it remotely or, you know, digitally. And I hope that helps you. So uh, be sure to go to bespokeclassroom.com and check out all the freebies that are there. Uh, there's so many that I, I love putting freebies into the freebie library and providing those resources for you so that you have access to things that are free and that you can print and use now. Um, most of my documents in that freebie library are PDF files. So that's what I'm talking about. Download one, save it as a picture, put it on a Google slide, put it in your text boxes, and shoot it out to your students and have them do it digitally and it will be awesome. That's it. Hope you guys have a great day. See you later.